Hello everybody, my name is Ray. Welcome to the Evangelical Dark Web. Today we're going to be talking about Ali Stuckey and the least of these. This has sort of been a controversy that's brewed up over the weekend and I wanted to dive into it because it's particularly relevant to this election season and it's also relevant to the book that I wrote, uh, Winning Not Winsome, Ten Commandments of Spiritual Warfare. Commandment 8 is to never surrender scripture. So that's what we're going to uh, follow today. Uh, we're not going to surrender scripture and let the least of these be misinterpreted uh, by a lot of people who would want to advance a liberal suicidal agenda. So we're going to dive into that. But first, I want you to know Evangelical Dark Web is a Christian news gathering and commentary ministry. You can support our work over to evangelicaldarkweb.org. Join. That's our patron-like system. Gives you bonus access to bonus content. This is a book winning, not winsome, that I mentioned earlier and you can buy that as well also linked uh so here's a tweet by ali stuckey that seemed to ruffle a lot of feathers uh she says the least of these is referring to persecuted christians not the poor so i'm voting for a set of policies that will best protect the truly least of these and she names names, Jack Phillips, Joan Bell, David Delayden, and other believers who have had their lives ruined by progressive activists. I, I know the name uh, David Delayden doesn't ring up. I, I can't think of the instance. I don't know who Joan Bell is off the top of my head. Uh, Jack Phillips did just win his third lawsuit against random liberals in Colorado. He's the owner of Masterpiece cake shop uh best known for the narrow procedural supreme court victory that was a pyrrhic one it was not exactly the the landslide victory that we needed uh i believe that co the football coach had a must uh had a much bigger victory than jack phillips did but nonetheless jack phillips is this poor guy and they keep going after him again and again and he just won a procedural victory at the Colorado Supreme Court. They gave a very woke decision, but it narrowly let him off the hook on a procedural foul. So take the win when you can get it, because he was not going to get any other win in that system. So Jack Phillips, you know, hopefully he can quit while he's ahead and the game just leaves him. You know, he, he's done his time and you know, he we've supported him and stuff like that. So, yeah, he he definitely qualifies as the least of these because he was in a very precarious situation being in Colorado and the civil rights legislation that they were using to attack him. So, Ali Stuckey names him as the least of these and other believers who have had their lives ruined by progressive activists. So she continues, no chance I could vote for the party that routinely targets Christians for harassment, di discrimination, and lawfare. Uh, now, lawfare is part of like that fourth generation of warfare, uh, which blurs the lines between, you know, politics and military. So, this is largely the realm in which we fight in as Christians and believers here on Earth. It's just what we're up against. And these are also tools at our disposal for practical solutions and applications of biblical principles. So anyway, um, this was apparently controversial for some reason. Like a lot of people who claim the name of Christ had to counter signal this. So let's uh, dive into some examples here. Uh, this is probably the biggest one that made it go viral was this guy, Zach Lambert, who is a gay-affirming pastor, uh, who says, This is completely made up. There were no Christians when Jesus said, Truly I said to you, whatever you did for the least, or did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Followers of Jesus were first called Christians at Antioch in Acts 11, at least 12 years after Jesus talked about supporting the least of these. People... Like Ali, who make this claim, are perverting the words of Jesus in order to score partisan political points and baptize their bigotry against anyone who doesn't share their understanding of faith. This is what it looks like to take the Lord's name in vain. Now, Zachary Lambert is a gay-affirming pastor in Texas. Uh, not someone to be taking seriously on anything, really. So, 
completely made up? No, it's not completely made up. We'll get into that in a second. Uh, there were actually, there were no Christians when Jesus was there. I mean, the word Christian might not have been coined, but the concept of a Christian existed in Jesus' time. Let's be real. I would say that the concept of Christian existed with Adam. You know, the first Christian. So, that's what I believe that the Bible teaches and very clearly teaches. So, that's a really bad argument. That's a very, you know, comic book guy level argument. And there's nothing perverted about this. This is about the context of brothers and sisters of mine. I think the verse just says brothers, but he's got to be a little bit more gender neutral than the text. So I also wanted to bring up uh, uh, this guy, honest youth pastor, who I don't I don't know why he had to weigh in on this and then like go back on it. So he says, I generally agree with Ali's takes, but this is just bad exe- exegesis. It isn't referring to persecuted Christians. While this could be a category that we could focus on today, it is. it has a much more general meaning in the original context. And again, I, I just think that's wrong. Uh, it's not bad exegesis at all. We'll get into that in a second. And then he later followed this up by saying, I stand correct and apologize to Ali Stuckey. While I think the tweet could have been worded better, uh, her clarification clears it up. It does appear that with this passage specifically, believers have seen this as speaking of fellow Christians. And yeah, I don't want to say duh, but yeah, I mean, what's the Christianese version for duh? So this is Bible Hub, which is the best website with the name hub in the word hub in the uh, URL, if you know what I'm saying. And this is the commentaries on Matthew 2540. And the king shall answer and say to them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done unto the least of these my brethren, ye have done unto me. And I guess it's defaulted on the King James. And majority of these commentaries agree that it, the my brethren is referring to Christians. So Matthew Henry, you know, does agree with that as well. Barnes says, my brethren, either those who are Christians, whom he condescends to call brethren, so that's broad label of Christians, or those who are afflicted, poor, and persecuted, who are his brethren and companions in suffering, who did, who suffer as he did on earth. So again, both of those are categories of believers, just how far the range goes as to what it's referring to. Uh, Matthew's Pool's commentary says that the poor, uh, that the poor they should have always with them, especially such as would live godly, so be more than others out of the favor out of favor with the world. So again, poor believers is what Matthew Pool is getting at. Uh, Gill's exposition also goes on about it being about believers. So this is about Christians. And indeed, these can only be considered as brethren of Christ who are born of God and who do and do the will of Christ for such accounts, his mother, brethren, and sisters. Again, Ali Stuckey did not come up with a novel interpretation of of a very famous text. She did not do that. I mean, there's more commentary, but the majority of the commentaries on here agree with Ali Stuckey. And she cited Denny Burke, who, you know, is a very prominent Southern Baptist figure. I don't really, you know, he, he might be one of the good guys in Big Eva, but, you know, I, I don't trust him that much. Uh, credit to Honest Youth Pastor for apologizing over this and, you know, backing down because he was definitely in the wrong here. But this is not the first time he's countersignaled someone who gave a correct interpretation of Scripture and then applied it to modern politics in the United States. And he went after them for that. He did that to Megan Basham. Uh, he did that 
now with Ali Stuckey, he deleted the thing on Megan Basham. Uh, so, and he did not do that here. He just took the L and turned it into a W. But either way, this is such a bizarre controversy. And why are people even, you know, citing this nonsense? I mean, Ali Stuckey needed to go in on it because people like Phil Vischer, for example, have been saying, you know, the least of these, using th this verse to say that we should be, you know, letting migrants from Haiti into our country. So there is an agenda with this passage that is being used against the church. Ali Stuckey, to her credit, did well here. And I hope she doesn't like do something like incredibly cringe that makes me regret this support like the last time I did a video on Ali Stuckey. But for now, I'm going to give her her flowers. Uh, again, she was right here. Uh, I also wrote an article on Jack Phillips, so, and you would have gotten that if you were on the newsletter. That's all I got to say about that for now. My name is Ray, the Evangelical Dark Web. Have a blessed day. Stay based, Christ is King, and we will catch you on the next one.